Oh my gosh. Hey guys, welcome back to Meet and Greet. I got a special episode in store for you guys today. We're talking pulled pork. We're talking pork butt. We're talking the easiest, most fail-proof meat in all of barbecue. Look, when I first started in barbecue, I did not touch a brisket until at least two years in. I was worried, I was scared. I didn't want to spend all the money and mess it up. And also when I came up in barbecue, there just wasn't a ton of knowledge. There wasn't a ton of data out about how to smoke a brisket. So I humbly admit to you, I was a little scared to touch a brisket. What I learned early on is your temperatures, your fires can go up, they can go down, you can cook 250, you can cook 275, it does not matter. This is the most forgiving cut of meat and barbecue, and today I'm gonna show you a fail-proof way to cook this puppy. Your friends are gonna love you, your wife's gonna love you, your husband's gonna love you, and, uh, and look, if you like this content, drop me a subscription because we're building this channel one video at a time. Meet and greet for the folks in the back of the back who just want to cook some darn good barbecue. Let's roll, guys. As I mentioned earlier, it's almost impossible to ruin a pork butt. You could throw some salt and pepper on this bad boy, throw it in the smoker, leave it in there for eight hours and call it a day and it would still be some of the most delicious barbecue you had. However, in an effort to make the most delicious pulled pork that your friends and family have ever had, I'm gonna talk about a couple different ways of doing this. So for starters, there's a fat cap on top of a pork butt. You could remove it, meaning you could trim it all the way off and you'd be okay. You could score it meaning you cut cross pattern diamonds on top of the fat cap and you'd be okay. You could leave the entire fat cap on top of the pork butt and you guessed it, you'll be okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little hybrid. I think I'm just gonna score it because I wanna show you guys how easy it is to do a pork butt. You don't have to do some fancy trim. You don't have to inject it and do all kinds of craziness. All you have to do is pull it out of the package, throw some seasonings on it, and get it on the pit. It's no pressure, it's fail proof. So I scored that, right? I cut little squares, little diamonds in there. There's a chance that if you don't score your fat cap and you just threw it on the smoker, if you weren't paying super close attention to your heat and your heat kicked up on you for a prolonged period of time, you do run the risk of this fat cap seizing up on you, meaning it starts to retract and it gets some weird shaping and it starts to pop all over the place. And um, that's not awful, that's not a bad thing. It's okay if it happens, but scoring your fat cap ensures that through the duration of the cook, this fat cap lays as flat as possible. And again, it's not necessary, it's not required. I just wanted to show you guys that uh, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. That's what I decided today. Some folks would suggest that you trim off loose or sharp edges, and you can do that. Here's what it looks like. Again, the purpose of this video is I wanna show you how easy it is to smoke a pork butt. I wanna show you how fail-proof and how easy it is, and so I don't wanna spend a bunch of time trimming stuff. I'm only showing you this just in case you wanna take a little extra time to make it perfect. So, you know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have this guy sticking out. It does run the risk of burning, and so you, you trim it off. Um, if you've ever smoked a brisket, you know that if, you, if you've not trimmed 100 briskets, then you can spend upwards of 30 minutes trimming a brisket. Pork butt is a complete opposite. So just look around, see if there's any sharp edges. I don't see any. We took that guy off. Um, here's a little shard of bone sticking out. If you want it, you could trim that off. I'm just gonna leave it because it's not that big of a deal. Again, easiest cut of meat and barbecue. Let's get our binder on there. Let's get it seasoned up. We'll get it on the pit. I have one of my favorite binders. I won't get lost in the weeds on binders. Just know I love them, I use it, I use a binder all the time. However, with this singular caveat, it is very easy to overdo a binder. Again, we've all heard the purpose of the binder is to help the seasoning adhere to the, to the meat, but here's what most people don't say. It helps the seasoning adhere to the meat if you don't have 30 minutes to let the seasoning rest on the meat. So the purpose of a binder is to squirt it on just a little bit, rub it around, 
lay your seasoning on top and almost immediately get your meat onto the pit. And so that's what I do. This is equal parts yellow mustard and Worcestershire sauce, equal parts, 50-50. You can do all kinds of stuff. It really doesn't matter. Purpose of the binder is just to get some moisture, some tackiness on the exterior of our meat lay some seasoning over the top and get it on the pit. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna season this bad boy with some 16 mesh coarse ground black pepper. Love my pepper. I got some Lowry's on deck. I'll hit it with some Lowry's. I got some kosher salt on deck. Hit it with some kosher salt. And for the color, Malcolm Reed, love you brother man. This rub by Malcolm produces arguably the best color and almost all a barbecue. I mean that, seriously. So I use this mostly for color. Of course, there's some garlic powder, onion powder. There is some delicious flavor inside of uh, Malcolm's Rub. However, my primary purpose for this is to give us the color that we're looking for. Let's do it. Texas barbecue is all mostly salt, pepper, couple additives. So I wanna take a Texas style approach to this pork butt. So I'm going heavy with the pepper. Again, 16 mesh coarse ground black pepper. I'm gonna go fairly liberal with the kosher salt as well, right over the fat cap, right over the top. I know we hear this all the time, but it truly is. It's a big, thick, heavy cut of meat. And again, we're only, we're only seasoning the exterior of the meat. We're gonna pull this up, possibly chop it. So keep in mind, you want enough seasoning to go around once you, um, once you pull it off the pit and you start pulling it. So it's really important. So we just hit it with black pepper, kosher salt. That was the Lowry's there, just a little bit, nothing crazy. And then we're gonna go over the top with a really liberal dusting of Malcolm Reed's right over the top with the Killer Hogs, the barbecue rub for some incredible color. Look at that. That's good stuff right there. Very liberal, friends. That'll do it. Pat it in, lift it up, shake off the excess. And that is a beautifully seasoned pork butt. Now it's time to get these on the pit. My pit's somewhere in the wheelhouse of 275 to 300. I want to put you at ease. Again, for my beginners, do not fear. It's nearly impossible to mess up a pork, but whatever seasoning you have in the cabinet, throw it on there, it will be delicious. Use any plethora of seasonings. It's your world, we're just living in it. You can't go wrong. Let's get these bad boys on the pit. Let's get some post oak rolling and I'll check back in a little bit. All right, friends, we're at the pit. Beautiful 500 gallon smoker, hand built by yours truly. I got a whole series on it, check it out. The play's pretty simple from here. We're running about 275, maybe 300. I'd be happy if this pit um, ran anywhere inside of that range. Again, there's no perfect formula to pull pork. Just run it at whatever temps you're comfortable. Anything 250 to 300, you'll be A-okay. <laughs> I'm gonna face the bone side towards the fire. Probably will be time to spritz here in about two, maybe three hours. The name of the game right now is just setting our bark. We want this pulled pork to eat as much smoke as it possibly can. So we're gonna load the rest of the pork butts up, close this door down, check back with you. Look at that rub, baby. Looking good, looking good. See you guys in a bit. Pork butts have been on for about three and a half hours and it's coming up to the time where I typically like to check my meats. So three and a half to five hours in, I'm typically checking the meats and we're looking for a couple simple things. The only thing we're really looking for is to make sure that we're not uh, doing anything grossly negligent in the way of burning meat. So we're gonna pop the door, we're gonna make sure that uh, we are not overly burning the meat, pretty hard to do again, so I doubt that's happening. And then I got my hog sprayer, it's full of about 50-50 apple cider vinegar to water. 
and I'm going to just lay a light mist over most of the pork butts. And then if there's some overly charred parts, I'll kind of give, give those sections some TLC. Um, I can show you better than I can tell you, so let's check it out. Nothing's burning too bad, but you can see that the surface of our butts, <laughs> the surface of our pork butts, they, uh, they're asking for a little bit of moisture. So we're gonna give it to them again. Don't overdo it. I see a lot of, I see a lot of guys kind of overdoing this spritz thing. The, the whole point of it is to do just a really light mist, just like that. Again, we're just trying to hydrate the surface of the meat. You don't really want to cool the meat down, so you don't want to over spritz them, especially not on the fat cap, because remember, we're trying to render this fat, so we don't want to overdo it. And again, I, I, sometimes I see guys pull out these crazy, like uh, these crazy pressurized spritzers, and they just hit their meat. What ends up happening is you, you wash your bark off. So remember, we're trying to build a beautiful bark. It's really important that we do that, not to beat a dead horse, but keep in mind, guys, as you're spritzing your, your proteins, just give him some light, light spritz. See this corner here? That guy's just a little dry. Remember I said you don't have to trim your meat? If you don't, this is what happens. Not that big of a deal. Look, we're just hitting it. Some TLC. There we go. Just cool it off just a little bit. That'll do it. We're rolling, baby. We're rolling. <laughs> Three and a half hours in, I'm gonna at least let these sit in there for another hour and a half, maybe two hours before I check them again. Bark isn't totally where I want it to be. Here in a second, I'm gonna to explain to you guys my methodology with pork butts behind setting a really thick bark. I wanna, I wanna overshoot my bark because here in a moment, we're gonna end up wrapping these in foil, and so I don't want that foil wrap to soften up my bark too much. Just know right now, I'm gonna let them roll for another couple hours just so I can really set that bark in, and then I'll show you what I do to finish them off. Hey, I'm trying to bring you guys the content. Show me some love. Show your favorite barbecue nephew some love and drop me a subscription. Love you guys, we'll be back, we'll be back. Psst. Hey, by the way, by the way, if you're new to barbecue and you're wondering, how the heck do I run my fires? How do I properly manage a fire? Like that one right there. If you have a 250, a 500 gallon, a thousand gallon, or you have a backyard smoker like, like my Oklahoma Joe there, Old Faithful, I got a little video. 55 minutes of pure barbecue gold, all things fire management. I'll link it, appreciate you guys. Five hours into the cook and it's time to wrap up our Boston butts. We officially got them off the smoker. Gonna make a little concoction here, nothing fancy, nothing fancy. I'll show you here in a second exactly what I'll do, exactly how I like to approach wrapping Boston butts. Pork shoulders, pulled pork. Here we go. First, I set a deeper, harder, crustier bark. I did that by design. Because we're gonna wrap these in foil, it's going to essentially braise or steam or create a, a very warm, moist environment for our pork shoulders. And so it's important to me when I'm cooking these that I go above and beyond and set just a, a little bit crustier of a bark. So this is our fat cap. Remember we scored it. And I don't know if you can hear if I put my mic there. I don't know if you can hear, but that is a crusty bark. It's perfect, it's beautiful. Thanks to our 16 mesh ground black pepper and our kosher salt, we were able to set a beautiful bark. In an effort to keep this process extremely simple, let me show you what I'm gonna do. So, first, just gonna add some moisture. Again, this is my apple cider vinegar. Just gonna add some moisture, add some acidity into this environment. The reason why I like to use foil pans rather than just foil is because, first off, if you've cooked enough pulled pork, you know that the foil sometimes pops and you lose all your juice. That's DEFCON 5. You don't want that to happen. So I like the foil pans because they, they add some rigidity, they add some stiffness, and it creates a nice environment for all of our juices to pool up. We're gonna use our juices later, so it's important we wanna keep it. So because we have these pans, you're gonna treat these pans like a, like a pool of flavor. Everything you add in here, you're going to save when you pull this. Remember guys, anything you add in here will be added back once you pull or chop your pork. So, I like to add a little bit of acidity, a little apple cider vinegar, step one. Step two, I'm gonna add some additional fat into the environment. This is unsalted butter, it's just a half stick. I take a half stick of butter, roughly four tablespoons, 
drop it right there. We'll take some brown sugar. Don't go crazy, I know, I know. You've seen all those competition guys putting all that butter and brown sugar and all the crazy molasses, just pouring it on the ribs, I know. A Little bit of brown sugar goes a long way. Again, we're not, we're not trying to overkill. We want the pork to be the main show. But we do want to add a little bit of sweetness. Last, I have my Meat Mitch Womp Sauce. Meat Mitch from Kansas City. I live less than an hour and a half from Kansas City. This is incredible stuff. Meat Mitch Womp Sauce, just a little bit. Right over the top. Little bit in there. One last step. Honey. I'm gonna hit these other two just like I did right now. I'm gonna get these inside the smoker. For my folks wondering, well Marcus, what temperature did you pull these out at? This is the first time that I've tempted these, so I'll just, I'll show you live. One forty-five. Now keep in mind these have been sitting on the countertop for just a little bit. I'd argue when I pulled them they were about 150, 155, which is perfectly okay. Now if these were brisket, I would not be wrapping these in the 150s or 160s. I like to wrap my briskets after the stall. However, with pulled pork, I like to wrap them prior to the stall. What happens in the stall is that, that meat, that thick cut of meat, it starts to pump out a bunch of moisture. It starts to pump out a bunch of liquid. Now when we're wrapping briskets, we don't want that liquid in our butcher paper. Another video for another day. However, with pulled pork, because we're trying to create this moist environment, we actually want the pulled pork to pump out a bunch of liquids and moisture and fat into our environment. We wanna catch all of that. It's gonna create a beautiful, saucy au jus of sorts that we can then pour back over our meat. I'm gonna finish these other two out. We'll get them back on the pit. At this point, we're just waiting for them to feel probe tender. I'll check back in a little bit. The journey to the perfect pulled pork has finally come to an end, my friends. Thank you for hanging out with me. I cannot wait to dig into this. I wanna show you the final product and um, let's just jump right into this beautiful pork butt. Oh, there she is. Wow, look at that, guys. Look at that. You honestly can't beat that. I promised you guys I was gonna bring you a simple, easy, fail-proof recipe to pull pork, and we, we accomplished that right here today. A couple things to know, and then I'm just gonna dive into this bad boy. So first, you can pull this, you can chop this, you could potentially slice this. There's a million different ways that you can serve pulled pork. Today, I'm just gonna take this guy out, I'm gonna put it on my cutting board, I'm gonna pull it by hand, and I'll kinda show you what I do. If you come in closer, you can see this bone, it's just ready to come out. So I'm gonna pull this, look at that. That's the money shot right there. What a delicious piece of meat. Bones out. And like I said, I'm just gonna pull this by hand. Remember, I set, I set my bark extra crusty, extra deep, because I knew we were gonna finish this in foil. If you remember earlier in the video, I told you guys I want this, I want this uh, pork butt to sweat out inside of our foil pan. The reason why we want that is because it creates this beautiful au jus. So I'm gonna dump this in here. Okay, let's get this pulled out and pulled up. You literally saw me pull the bone out. So this is just ready to fall apart on us and that's what we want from a beautiful pulled pork. Got our meat here. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh, I could cry. If you could smell it, if you could see it, if you could touch it, you'd know how incredible this is. Without further ado, let's pull into this. As a reminder, to recap, this smoked about eight hours on the pit. 
I purposefully ran my temperatures all over the place so I could validate that this is fail proof. At one point I walked out and I think it was like 210 degrees, guys. I mean, I, I let my fire die out for 30 minutes. I went back, I threw some logs on there. I jumped it up to 350. It probably dropped down to 275. I mean, I was all over the place. I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you guys there's, there is, it's impossible to do this thing wrong. I'm literally water, watering at the mouth, so let's do this. They don't call it pulled pork for no reason. Again, if you had a big meat cleaver, you could just hack it up and make chopped pork. But we don't even need to do that. Oh my goodness, you guys, what in the world? <laughs> oh my gosh. This is our fat cap. Remember we scored that? Look at, the, look at the bark on the fat cap. I mean, it's just full of flavor. What I like to do is just pull this up. If you, hey, and if your wife is like, honey, I don't like fat in my food. I know, I know, because some, some, some people do that. If they don't like fat, if you got a grandma that's like, baby, don't, don't put a bunch of fat in my barbecue. Just sneak it in on them, guys. Just sneak it in on them. They won't know what hit them. I mean, they'll bite that. It'll, it'll just be a flavor bomb they won't know. So just chop it up, just sneak it in there. And then what I like to do to kind of top it off and round it all out is I'll take my, uh, I'll take my, I'll take the, the juice, the bath that we created. And I didn't promise this was gonna be clean, healthy, or any of that. It's messy and uh, you know, it's probably not great on the waistline, but I promise you it tastes good. Just pour that over the top. Not too much, you don't wanna overdo it. Just rehydrate it a little bit, guys. Mix that back in. And that, that, gosh, look at it. It's beautiful, let's taste it, let's taste it. Perfect bite, a little bit of fat, a little bit of bark. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. It's, <laughs> I have no words. I need more, I need more. Sorry guys. Let's dip it in the juice. Oh my gosh. Hands down some of the best pulled pork I've ever done. It's all over my face, it's a mess. It's a flavor bomb. I, there, just, there's nothing else. The video's over. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm diving in. Love you guys. Meet and greet. Over and out.